Guys, let's get back. I want to finish up this module. I want to get back to the back of the house. Mm. All right, so we at uh, we said that uh, the copper nickels uh, is expensive, and then we're moving on to lead and alloys, right? Three point three point four, chemical lead, right? Acid lead and copper lead are the grades usually specified for chemical process construction, right? In lead clad products, lead corrosion is combined uh, with the strength of the steel or the heat transfer of copper. Right? That's not strange. All right. Uh, when it, when it, this sorry, lead is, relies on its high resistance to corrosion upon a thin a protective coating that forms on its surface. When coating is one of the highly insoluble lead salts uh, like sulfate, uh, carbonate, or phosphate, resistance to corrosion is high. Right? Usually, what they do is they. Uh, in terms of uh, corrosion resisting or coating, they spray on lead, right? And it has a high corrosion resistance, so they spray on lead onto other metals, and it creates a coat onto that metal. Or oh, it's called hot uh, dipping. Have you heard of that term? They take a metal and they dip it into uh, like a liquid. Uh, it looks like paint, but it's actually lead. And they, uh, they, Dip it in there and take it out. Is that like similar to galvanizing? Or something like galvanizing. Something like, uh, I think they, they use it for certain gates and all too. Yeah. Right? You're protecting those gates. They take a uh, mild steel gate and they hot dip it in lead. But it becomes very expensive if you hot dip. Right? Right, so when this coating is one of the highly insoluble lead salts like sulfate, carbonate, or phosphate, resistance to corrosion is high, and the environmental general sorry, the environment generally promotes self-heating upon mechanically sorry mechanical injury to the film. Right, on the other hand, uh, if soluble film forms as a nitrate, acetate, or chloride, the protection is afforded and the lead may corrode further. Right. Uh, dilute nitric acid is an example of a corrosive which reacts with lead uh, to form a soluble salt. This highlight that uh, line, right? It's dilute. Because it's self healing, yeah? not self heating. Where? Are you ready? Self, self, promote self healing. Uh, which line is that? It's a. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Self healing, yeah? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's part of it. Yeah. All the T's, all the T's in the album. It's always uh, yeah. something yeah. after the textbook. Yeah. yeah. It fixes itself. Yeah. It fixes itself. That's what it means, right? I don't know why in the textbook a lot of the T's and uh, L's are mixed up. And I told you that this, uh, that last line there, that there uh, comes out. The dilute nitric acid is an example of a corrosive which reacts with lead to form a soluble salt. This that line there is important, right? Hmm? It's there. Yeah. Uh, there. I want you to highlight it. It's the last line. Forms lead nitrate. Yeah. Dilute nitric acid is an example of a corrosive which reacts with lead to form a soluble salt. Right. Um, next, next, next. We are moving to three point three point five titanium. Right. Uh, it has become an increasingly important construction material and consists of the uh, following properties. So first we're looking at the advantages. But one thing you need to understand about titanium is very expensive, right? Mm -hmm. So, okay, we we'll look at the disadvantages. First, let's look at the advantages. Important, right, for construction material because it's strong and medium weight. So it has high strength and it's very lightweight. So it makes it easy to work with. Uh, it's also corrosion resistance, very uh, superior, superior in oxidizing mild and reducing media, resistant to hot chloride solutions, resistant to all concentrations of nitric acids, resistant to seawater, uh, and it's better than uh, stainless steel. Right? Resistant to seawater, better than stainless steel. Disadvantages, it's high cost, right? Uh, not easy to... Uh, from produce yeah. form. form yeah I don't know where it is from there but easy to form produce welding uh, to be done in inert atmosphere conditions 
as a high spring back. And uh, what they mean by high spring back, it, uh, when you're actually trying to bend this metal, mm -hmm. it, it, it actually has a, a pushback. So when you're bending it, it takes a longer time to actually uh, form the shape you want, right? Uh, next, we are looking at 3.3.6, zirconium, right? It was originally developed as a construction material for atomic reactors, but nowadays it is also used for jet engines. Zirconium also resembles titanium, right? They also use titanium in planes, right? Mm -hmm. Right, uh, it resembles uh, titanium and co it's also corrosion resistant, however, right, it is more resistant to hydrochloric uh, acid, HCl, right? It also reduce, uh, resists chlorides except ferric and cupric, right, or cupric. There are a number of alloys of titanium and zirconium, refers to uh, zerk alloys, zerk alloys, right, with mechanical properties superior to those of pure metals. Next, we're looking at 3.3.7, uh, tantalum. And usually, the, these ones, the, 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 the zirconium, tantalum, usually doesn't come out. But anyway, we're just gonna go over it, right? Uh, its physical properties are similar to mild steel, except that it has a higher melting point. It is ductile and malleable, and is worked into integrate forms. It can be welded by a number of techniques. It, the metal is practically inert, right, to many oxidizing and reduction acids except fuming sulfuric. It is attacked by hot alkalized and hydrochloric acid, uh, HF. It costs limits to use uh, heating coils, coolers, and condensers operating under severe conditions. So, uh, when you say it's, it's worked into intricate form, what does that mean? So you can like make it into like tantalum, you can make it into small, uh, you can like bend it in such a way you can get like small shapes out of it. And or something? Not, well, not jewelry, but similar they tantalum. use it in uh, some, uh, in, in terms of like, uh, what are those things called? Uh, not my uh, computers, servers. In uh, massive servers, they use tantalum. So they use it for like on a massive, like a, a server is a, like a number of hard drives put, uh, put together. Mm -hmm. But like the hard drive we normally see is just like, you know, you see like a one terabyte hard drive. They have like, uh, there's something higher than a terabyte, I forgot what it's called. Uh, but, uh, but it's, uh, it's the servers are made up of maybe a hundred times a thousand terabytes. Right, and then they use this uh, tantalum to actually connect uh, the silicone uh, chips in there. So what they mean is by they can bend it into like uh, shapes that they need it. Right? Then the next we're looking at non-metal materials. Right? The non-metal materials are your glass and glass steel. Right? Um, how do you make glass? Sand. Yeah. What type of sand? Sea Yeah. It's yeah, called sea yeah, sand. Yeah, yeah right? Yes. Yeah. They heat it up, right? And then, uh, have you seen the production of it? Okay, I'm just going to kill time, if I, but I'm going to put up a video for that, right? Yeah. They, they actually, for, in terms of the non-metal materials, they usually ask you about glass and uh, how do you make it? Yeah, so the non-metal materials, they usually ask you about glass and plastic. The wood, so the, the wood and stuff right? doesn't usually come out. But usually, glass is very important, right? They usually ask for non-metals, glass is very important. Right, so you have to know the resistance, uh, the advantages and disadvantages, right? It is particularly uh, suitable for piping uh, where transparency is desired. Uh, resistance, it has excellent resistance to all acids except uh, I and IF, right? It is attacked by hot alkaline solutions, disadvantages, uh, brittleness and subject to thermal shock. However, it can be strengthened by fiberglass. Right? You, all, you know what's fiberglass? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But how is that strengthened by... So they're using the... the basically, they're using like uh, glass. Mm -hmm. And on, over the glass, it's not like a normal glass that you're seeing. What's this normal glass? 
glass here. But anyway, it's not like your normal glass where you're looking at it all like this here. On, on this glass is a coat of fiberglass. So when you look at the glass, it lo it's like see-through and it, it, it almost feels like plastic. It almost feels like plastic, but it is actually glass. And they use it for uh, piping where you actually need to see the material through. So you need to look visually, see material. So that's when they, they use, uh, it's a, a combination of glass and fiberglass around it. The fiberglass gives it like this plastic uh, feel. Right? The, the one advantage is uh, excellent resistance to all acids except for? Iron, iron. What's iron? I don't know, it's something to do with, I don't know. Yeah. Iron for like floral, I don't know. But I'll find out. No, it's fine. Right. You don't need to know. Yeah. yeah. No, you actually have to know that. I thought it was H. No, you actually have to know this. This is an advantage of it. Yeah, but you write I, I, F, it's fine, right? Yeah. The, there's two points. The resistance advantage and disadvantage, you have to know that. They ask you this in the, actually in the exams, right? Okay. Uh, next, we're looking at uh, glass steel, right? Controlled uh, high temperature uh, firings, chemically bonded glass to steel, right? So that, that's the thing, when we thinking, in your mind is thinking of glass, you're just thinking of this type of glass. Mm -hmm. This glass, uh, you can uh, remember, I don't know if you've seen blowing, when the guys mm -hmm. use blowing glass. They, they, that uh, glass can be so strong, you can like throw it on the floor and it wouldn't break. Mm -hmm. And then they use this glass, right, and they bond it to steel. It doesn't actually mix with steel, but it's like a coat around steel. Usually they put a... Uh, glass, right, and a steel inside the glass, right, and, and it's like super, super strong. Well, I'll have to show you, uh, the other guys were confused uh, when I did this uh, uh, course before, so I actually, when I show them the videos, and you actually see what it is, it doesn't look like glass at all. Okay. And it comes out like normal piping and stuff, you're like, so you're like thinking, hey, no, it looks like plastic, but it's not, right? I did uh, glass for you. Huh? I did glass for you. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Where? In uh, Switzerland, that is well. Switzerland? Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, you went yeah. there for a holiday and they... Yeah, there was a uh, uh, place there where yeah. they have a whole lot of... Oh, you products. brought any souvenirs and all? Yeah, I'm not with that. It's, I think I broke it. Oh, <laughs> 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 No, but oh. it's, it's, a, it's a art. Art. Right? It's the art. like family tradition is yeah. passed over. Yeah. But it start from scratch they where they, they go step by step. Step by step. It's, step by step. it's a long process. process yeah. yeah, it's a long yeah. process. Yeah, so I'll have to show you guys videos of that. Bilal is fortunate, you know, <laughs> right? Uh, yeah, so this glass steel has the corrosion resistance of glass uh, with the strength of steel. Uh, next, we're looking at new right? Uh, it is a ceramic metal composite similar to glass steel. However, it is 18 times stronger. Let's highlight it there, guys. <laughs> It is 18 times stronger than safety glass, resistance to abrasion and uh, more resistance to uh, thermal shock. I think this new cell right can take a bullet. They have it, uh, they put it on the, what's this? Uh, armored vehicles. The armor, yeah. Not here. Uh, what's it called? Bulletproof. Bulletproof, Bulletproof yeah. yeah. They put it on the, the tankers mm. and uh, I think it's certain, yeah. It's armor. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so. It's uh, resistant to abrasion and resistant to thermal shock and glass steel. It is resistant to uh, corrosion uh, of HCl gas, chlorine or sulfur uh, dioxide at 50 degrees, all acids and HF up to 175 degrees. And next we are looking at plastics. Right? Plastic materials. So they do, this also comes up, plastic materials does come up. It's a uh, comparison with uh, metallurgic materials, uh, the following is applicable. Right? The advantages of using plastic, it is lightweight, it has good uh, thermal and electrical insulators, and are easy to fabricate and install, right? and low friction factors. So we use plastic for piping, uh, now they're actually using uh, recycled plastic for roads in Europe. It's like hard as tar. Okay. No, we got it. Yeah. We have? In Hammersdale, there's a place where like, they use plastic for the roads. For the roads, yeah? Yeah, they started doing something. Okay, like I never... You can't steal the plastic. 
<laughs> to do what? Well, you never know. He's stealing everything. No, but they're making. Yeah, because the roads now. Oh, it's lights. Oh, they're making taps out of plastic also. Huh? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Taps yeah. are made. Yeah, but those are synthetic. Yeah, and then uh, yeah. The, the, there's also a lot of three D printing with plastic, so you yeah. can actually make uh, whatever molds you want uh, in terms of three D printing, right? But uh, it's actually a good thing that they're doing the roads with that because yeah. the trotty job. It's, it's right actually well, but quite expensive. There must be a project. No, in but China. I just like the yeah. one, the one opened they got a bit. They they took it off the area. Oh, okay. So they started. It looks normal, but yeah. You can't they haven't seen the roads. They're big now. No, no, no it's also there, but the yeah. opened. We think yeah. like, they got some warehouses that all like. Why don't we do an excursion? Yeah. And you can yeah, we get that on the roads. <laughs> 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 but the chemos guys, we take them to plants, but then for plant work, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Work. Yeah, because yeah. sometimes when you're reading some something, and, and you, you don't see, see it. it. Like, that's what I'm saying. The glass now, it seems like yeah. weird that you're using glass as a protection material, but uh, when you actually see it, it's different, right? Uh, so, in terms of the uh, sorry, if it's not corroded by weak acids, inorganic soil solutions, slight changes of pH, changes in oxygen content. The limitations of plastic in its use are uh, limited to moderate temperatures and pressures, less resistant to mechanical abuse, and have high expansion rates and have low strengths. Right? So, in, ter in terms of your plastics, you know, when you look at your bottles, right? You see, there's a recycle value on it. There's a triangle with a, a number on it. Right? The higher the number, the more reusable the plastic is. So if you look, you check on that one. There should be one for these bottles. Your luncheons, your uh, Tupperware and stuff will be four or five. Anyone getting the luncheon yet today? Huh? Let's see. No, it has to be this. It can't. You know. Right, look at this here, right? Pass it around the class. Five, but it's five. 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 So why it's five? Five tells you. Five. Five is microwavable, right? And it does is BPA free and doesn't release uh, carcinogenics when it's heated. So when you heat this one here, expose one to sun. Yeah. Right, it releases a gas that's carcinogenic. Oh. It gives you cancer. That's why, you never, never leave. That's why you're not, not supposed to leave the bottles okay. in the sun yeah, and not to reuse that it. That makes sense because some people, they, they misconcept that, you know, they say certain bottles don't drink water from it and stuff. Yeah. 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 But so you see that BPA free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the BPA is a gas, it's a gas released in plastic when it comes in contact with heat. So if you're looking at the limitations of plastic, uh, it's this thing. It's used limited uh, to moderate temperatures and pressures. So as you increase temperatures to plastic, it starts to deform. You don't see that deformity, but and when it deforms, it releases BPA. Okay. Yeah. Where is this banana? Yeah, the opening is probably somewhere there. I think the, the this thing. But the but the other thing is true, right? The the lower the recycle value. If you have one recycle, that means the bottle is very recyclable. But then if you have your scarf in, you can't uh, recycle the, uh, yeah, the license because it's a high value, it's thick plastic. If by law, it has to have it, so you find it somewhere in the wall. This one doesn't have a number. It has to, it's this illegal. Also it. Does no, no, some of them, some of them don't, huh? it's illegal. Some don't, yeah. Oh, it's under the triangle. Yeah, yeah. Mine doesn't. Oh, the triangle. Mine doesn't. Oh, mine, okay. It's illegal to not have. No, no, but then maybe it's, it's not recyclable. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it. there's a chair, I think. Yeah. yeah, it's on top. It's one. So one is it's one. It's in here. It's, it's very bad. Eh? Yeah. Yeah. Show you. Your is one. One. It's all one. They're not going to use uh, because yeah. if they use a stronger plastic for the bottle, the bottle will become too expensive. And decomposing will be a oh, yeah. 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 plastic. Yeah. Plastic doesn't Thanks for that information. You know, the recyclable yeah. value. Yeah. So the lower the number on the triangle, the more recyclable it is. What's it but the, uh, it's also a bad thing because the lower the number, the you can't reuse the bottle. That's why when you guys, when you're 
fill up and refill this water bottle because it's a one use. Yeah. Oh, okay. You mustn't use it again. Once it exposes to sun, hey, bad. That's why it's bad. You can give you cancer. Those, those big clowns, those big clowns, the people put what's in. Yeah. yeah. That thing is a one use. Yeah. yeah. So especially if that thing is exposed to sun, you see they, they take it away. Yeah, take it away. Yeah. That's why they take it away. Yeah. Maximum is 5%. What's you get up to seven. Seven. Seven, seven. seven is like top five. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Top away was strong. The top away. Uh, top away is the one that got five. Five. Yeah. Mm. Top away. You see the micro. Once it's microwaveable, yeah, yeah, it has to be like five and higher. Yeah. 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 But you learn that in yeah, you know all of this is in chemo. But you yeah. know, but you don't. You know sometimes you don't. Uh, yeah, we learned all this here. You're learning in level four, or level three chemo. Chemo. Uh, yeah, yeah. all of this here is there. Yeah. All of this here, all this whole module and this part is there. We were here, we were here, but we're not here. <laughs> so you're looking at the phones in to the files. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you all did it that time. Came up that time. Yeah. Yeah, because that was the only thing you needed for an operation. Yeah. 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 You were like, leasing with bar, four bar. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, anyway, guys, let's move on. So, we looked at uh, plastics, right? Then, we're looking at the different types of plastics. Uh, Teflon, right? You, you have seen the Teflon pants. Yeah. Remember the Teflon pants? Remember, I was talking about this here. Mm -hmm. Cast iron is better than Teflon. You said it was the One seat. P I can't or something. Yeah. yeah. So, once the Teflon pants starts to scrape, you know your non yeah the non-stick pen. Once throw it's it great, must throw it away. Mm. You mustn't use it because you start ingesting the teflon, which is mm. bad for you. Also, cast your genetic. Mm. Mm. Just like clean all yeah. that off properly now. Sorry. That's why you're not supposed to use. Throw it away. 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 Throw so it not, it was not one part of it must break. So as soon as it breaks or scratches, mm -hmm. then hey, that thing is gone. It starts going into your food. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yo, they must use That's why they say cast iron. Cast iron is the best. But it's expensive though. It's very expensive. So for non-stick? Cast iron. Yeah, but it's not non-stick. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. In terms of your titanium. Yeah. Ah, they Google something, yeah. Yeah. Right. Teflon is only safe and can't harm you when you ingest it. Oh, particles of flaked or chipped pans that find themselves in food pass through your digestive system don't pose any health risks. Ah, uh, that's what it says. So you're okay. <laughs> 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 Pasta on side. Pasta on side. We need to check this. <laughs> 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 All right, guys, let's carry on. Uh, polyethylene is a weak and low-cost plastic. Uh, uh, we get uh, these are, uh, these are polyethylene uh, uh, recyclable ones, the bottles, right? Uh, Unplasticized uh, polyvinyl chlorides uh, resist alkalis. Uh, that's your PVCs, right? No, no, no. Yeah, your PVCs. Uh, chlorinated polyesters can be used at high temperatures. Example, your kettles, right? Cellulose uh, acetate uh, butyrate, unaffected by dilute acids. Acetyl, sorry, acetyls resist organic solvents. Purine plastics filled with uh, asbestos, which make it a better alkali resistance. Uh, epoxies uh, reinforced with fiberglass is very strong and resistant to heat. And uh, bakelite is a hard and does not dissolve in organic solvents. Right. So, 
Uh, you need to know this thing. They're going to ask you some, uh, I think the you have to know these things, right? What? All, all of them? Uh, uh, these, uh, one thing. This, I, I remember polyethylene and the polyvinyl chloride coming out. Chloride. So I can't Poly say that. Polyethylene, yeah? Uh, polyvinyl chloride. You need to know, like, you know, this polyvinyl chloride. Polyvinyl yeah. chloride. Unplasticized polyvinyl chloride. Oh, that's Okay, thanks. It's uh, those ones, and uh, I think ep epoxies uh, also came out. Right, so next we are looking at rubber and elastomers. Rubber and elastomers are widely used as lining materials, right? Uh, natural rubber right, resists to dilute mineral alkalis and salts while oil attacks it. Silicone rubber is resistant to low and natural temperatures and alphatic oils and grease. Uh, neoprene rubber resists attack by ozone oils and gasoline and a fluoroelastomers combine excellent chemical mild high temperature resistance. Polyvinyl uh, chloride and thermoplastics, PVC, right? This elastomer has an excellent resistant uh, to materials, sorry, to mineral acids and petroleum oils, but burn when overheated. And this is obviously very similar to the above plastic, right? Uh, but it's also, it, it's the same type of compound we're using in uh, rubber. Uh, in this year, guys, you need to know this whole, all of these. Let's make a note there, all of that. Carbon graphite A hasn't come out. Carbon graphite hasn't come out, but we're gonna go over it, right? Carbon and graphite. The chemical, uh, chemical resistance depends on somewhat on the resin binder used to make the material uh, impervious. Generally, impervious graphite is completely inert to the most severe oxidizing conditions. This property combined with excellent heat transfer has made uh, impervious carbon and graphite very poor in heat exchangers as brick lining and in pipe and pumps. I turn over, take a, put a highlight on the note there. On the next page, page 34 at the top, Limitations on these materials is its low uh, tensile strength and threshold oxidation temperatures are 350 degrees for carbon and 400 degrees for graphite. Uh, next we are looking at brick construction. Brick line construction can be used for very corrosive conditions and very high alloys would fail. Right? Did you know common bricks are made from carbon, red shale and acid proof ingredients? Right? Doesn't get you don't get tested on that, but yeah, this is an interesting fact. Then we're looking at the next 3.4.6 porcelain and stone uh, advantages are uh, resistance to acids and chemicals as glass, stronger than glass. Disadvantages poor thermal conductivity, so it doesn't actually take in a lot of heat, easily damage, and can actually crack. If you want to remember that, just remember like your tiles, right? Yeah. Uh, wood, right, I don't think this ever came up, but anyway, it is fairly inert chemical product. A number of manufacturers offer wood as uh, impregnate, sorry, impregnated to resist acid, alkalize, and effect of high temperatures. Uh, disadvantages burn easily, uh, readily dehydrated, shrinks badly, and it can be hydrolyzed. That means uh, when you uh, add water to it, it can break uh, the wood, right? Uh, activity, right? So in terms of the activity, it's basic notes here. Uh, state the four disadvantages of titanium. Can you see that? Titanium is highlighted right on top. Right? And the next one is state the four advantages of using plastic as a non-metal material. Then explain uh, sulfonation. List metals and alloys commonly in use. List the non-metal materials used list the non-ferrous metals, right? And then this is tick here, you should be able to describe basically the whole chapter, right? If you answer no to any of the outcomes listed, then speak to your facilitator for guidance. Yeah. Temba? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, you need to work on that theory. I need to give you the bigger memory, yeah? It's only theory. theory. That means the easy subjects. No, you're okay. You're okay. No, okay. Huh? 
Yeah, you, you need to listen. Yeah, maths and science is practice. This year is you have to learn it. You have to learn this, guys. It's just so much of theory. You're going to see in the chemistry in that last model. Yo, 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 yo. It's just equations upon equations. Well, we're going to learn about different elements. And under different elements, there's about five equations. Five equations, five equations. So you'll have about 60 equations that you'll have to know. And I can't tell you which one's going to come out. They mix it up all the time. Yeah. Already you got so much, so many of equations. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying the theory in my subject is cracking. The next module will be, uh, it wouldn't be that bad, guys. It's uh, module four, industrial chemical gas, uh, gases and processes. So this is something that you'll be familiar with because it's like plant work, right? Yeah. This is what we got done. So then we got module five, organic process. Four, five, six. Yeah, four, five, six. That's it. Yeah. We've got like one, two, three. But remember, what's your first exam? Yeah, 10, uh, 10 July. 21st July. Yeah. Round the corner, guys. You're already at the end of the month. We need to, uh, need to start moving, eh? That's good. Then we start past your papers. This is all past your papers. Yeah. Yeah. So there's one that says explain yeah. sulfonation, right? Yeah. But in, only in module 5. Yeah, I know. I don't know why it's uh, like that. Yeah. 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 We didn't do the sulfonation. But we'll come to that. Don't stress. Okay. Okay, I'm trying to look for weird ones. It wasn't there. Yeah, it's not there. Sorry? Yeah, no, all the activities, guys. You have to do the activities. Yeah, the activities, and obviously the answers. For me, the, the activity, the answers are in the book. It's straightforward, but do it. You have to do it. It just reinforces whatever we did here. So, like, what I used to tell the other guys, when we used to come to class, I used to give them, uh, tell them, okay, read this module. So when they used to come and then we used to go over the module, it's the second time we're doing it. Then they answer the questions, it's the third time. And then when you learn it, you're doing it the fourth time. So you should retain some so like So like module four now, we should go through it. You should just read it. For two, 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 just so read it. Even if you understand nothing yet, yeah. you just read it. And then when I explain it, you start to pick up something. When you answer and look at the questions, then it makes sense. It's only eight pages. It's only eight pages. It's yeah. so like real life stuff anyway. So yeah, you can relate to. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. And then the videos help you out. If you don't understand anything, like it sounds totally foreign, then I got the video for you there. Where you can actually go back and actually see the visual of it. But the other stuff, the materials, the glass and all that, I'll put it up. So you can actually look at it. Alright, right, okay, thanks the, guys. The cracker. That's where you have to start all these videos. Yeah, no, no, not even, this is, this is not even the stuff. This is, <laughs> this is uh, chem plant, I'm talking about chemistry. Oh, chemistry, yeah. 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 <laughs>